is that Sean Mendez? Are those the Hadid, like Gigi and Bella Hadid? I'm like, what the f is going on? What, what is my fat ass doing here? And at that time, Fortnite was at its still peak. So I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm just going to go up to girls and be like, you know, you ever heard of Fortnite? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm Fortnite. I am Fortnite. They're not gonna. They're just yeah. gonna be like you're Fortnite. <laughs> like it's a DJ name, like Skrillex. <laughs> like, wow, you're Fortnite. Hi. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't sleep at all because I have a severe case of food poisoning. Oh, oh no! What yeah. are you trying to get out of the bathroom? <laughs> like I've been in the bathroom since uh, three o'clock. So it's this real. Morning. It's real. Dead serious. I'm, I'm, I don't want to make this too graphic, but are you painting the toilet? I so easiest way to put this so it's not too graphic is I have become an inside-out human. Okay. Everything that once existed within <laughs> my body is now a part of the outside world. He's Pablo Picasso with the with the toilet. With wow, that's with the shit. Well, he's with the shits. Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. And that's facts. I Googled it yesterday. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. It said number one, and then it filled it up for me. I, I just said number one, and then it was like number one. Paul in the Rick, shut yep. up, really? Yeah, yep, yeah. Right yeah. I'm, I, bet, I bet he's not lying. So hit that subscribe button. Join the join the Impulsive Gang Squad cast member group. Go Logan. <laughs> uh, what's up, guys? Uh, I'm great. Check good. this out. Brand awareness. Boom. Now you're mad at me. Go ahead. Yell at me. <laughs> well, because you're plugging your brand on my podcast? <laughs> yes. It's fine, dude. Nice joke, towards that, <laughs> nice joke towards that whole thing that happened to us at one time. What yeah. happened? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Times have moved on. Uh, we got a phenomenal guest today. Great guest. Welcome, welcome back to the group. Uh, it's Monday. We're going to kick this week's ass. I'm hot. I'm sweating. I'm drinking a lot of water. The doctor told me I've been drinking too much water. Did you know that's possible? Never. Did what? You, if you drink too much water, your brain can drown. How much is too much water though? Because like uh, Brady, I'm Brady right, drinks I'm, uh, like I think multiple gallons a day of water. Look up how much water Tom I'm at. Brady I'm at about two to three. That's a lot. Two if, to three gallons, brother. Two to three gallons. Thirteen point three liters. I think is the max before your brain starts to drown. Hold on. Or something like okay, that. At what point are you that you. thirsty? Water, water intoxication, uh, also known as water poisoning, which you know maybe that's what I have, uh, <laughs> uh, is a problem. It's it's scary for a lot of people. Water can be dangerous, dude. You can you can drown on a teaspoon of water. You can drown on a teaspoon of water. Health. So Healthy Somehow. kidneys are able to excrete approximately 800 milliliters to a liter of fluid water per hour. Yeah. Because because essentially what you're doing is flushing out all the good nutrients that are in your body. Yes. Oh, so you lose yes. electrolytes. Yes. Everything, everything. You, Have you, you ever drank Pedialyte as an adult? I love Pedialyte. It's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Hangovers? Um, Pedialyte. Not, and, not a brand deal. Go to CVS when you're hungover. Grab a Pedialyte. Down it. You'll be good in two hours. I think that's what you should actually be drinking instead of like a Gatorade. Yeah, like, oh, oh, for, yeah, sure. for people, sure. People have no idea how much sugar is in Gatorade. No. Drink like two Coca Colas and that's a Gatorade. That's crazy. Well, are you, can we get a fact check on that? I don't know if that's true. That's yeah, sure. That seems a, a bit excessive. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not, Gatorade's not like, well, too I get sugary. that. I get the fat one, you know, the big Gatorade, the yeah. one that's kind of like, it's like a chubby my Gatorade. My girlfriend, my girlfriend Josie will only get the Gatorades with the sucky tops. That's what she calls it, the sucky tops. She Lucky likes man. She, she, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I want to bring out our guest today. He is one of the most prominent figures in the gaming industry with 3 million subscribers on YouTube and 2 million followers on Twitch. Most famously known for dating Ariana Grande. Congrats. <laughs> nice wow. Please welcome the 100 Thieves gaming guru, Jack Courage Dunlop. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you. How you doing, brother? How you doing? Much excitement for this hey, one. Congratulations, man. I've been waiting, man. Hey, been waiting so, so long for this. Yeah, definitely just celebrated my one-year anniversary with my actual girlfriend yesterday. I saw that, actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Ariana, if you're out there, let's go out to dinner. <laughs> so, and then you know. there's no more anniversaries now after that. <laughs> That's it. One year was the max. I actually, I actually saw your uh, yeah, volume's good. Everything's good in the headphones. Yeah, everything's great. You sound nice and loud. Maybe you can turn them down like... 10%. We'll turn down Logan like 80%. Yeah, you think I'm bad? I didn't talk. You think yet. I'm bad? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't talk yet. 95. Sorry. 95. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I saw actually your anniversary tweet, yeah. your one year anniversary tweet. Thank and you. Uh, as, as I, I follow you everywhere, bro, I got to say, I'm, I'm a massive fan. And, and, and I've been uh, watching you just blow up over the past two years. Just blow up. And when Thank I you. first started watching you, mm -hmm. um, you were on the come up, the cusp of the come up. And I said to myself, Yo, this guy is such a, an amazing personality, yeah. and he's phenomenal at gaming wow. too. Like, where's the recognition? And now it's here. So, like, it's the famous case of reality has caught up to the, to the uh, the presence ahead that of you. your time. Wow, <laughs> guys, a talent scout. But, uh, <laughs> he is a great talent scout. But, but, actually. I, but I did see your tweet yesterday, mm -hmm. the anniversary tweet, and I took notes. Okay, because it was so sweet. Thank you. It was I, so sweet. You love this girl. It was one of those where you know you start in in the notes. 
and then ah, you bring it yep, to Twitter. Yep, yep, And you're yep. checking the character limit and everything, and it wound up working out well. I got some brownie points for it. Uh, yeah, it yeah. I want to read it here. Ready? Oh, thank Is you. Is this going to be embarrassing? No, it's just you're you're a man of uh, many many facets, and and love is is wow. definitely one of them. <laughs> Maddie, <She's hot. laughs> Maddie, your beauty, work ethic, and infectious laugh are second to none. You've pushed me out of my comfort zone countless times, and made me a better man because of it. Sushi. Together, we're unstoppable. Happy one year anniversary. I love you. That's wow. amazing. If gaming ends up not working, Hallmark like cards. Cards, yeah. My mom favor. loves Hallmark movies. Do who? What mother does it? If your mother doesn't like Hallmark. Get rid of her. Get a new mom. <laughs> Get a new mom. Okay. Right. I can do that. But. <laughs> but I found this fascinating. Um, Thank you. Yeah, because you game. And I've always found it hard to balance girlfriend, like real life stuff, and gaming. It is. Um, and we asked Nate Shaw. I asked you. I'm sure you saw the episode. Yeah. I was like, how does Jack do it? Jack, how you do it? Because he got game. Hey, well, thank you, George. That's all right. I'll give him brownie points to that, too. But no, uh, I really don't know. I don't know how it worked out. Um, You know, her her lifestyle was really crazy and traveling a lot and Mm -hmm. going everywhere for her job. And uh, we we met prior to the pandemic, prior to 2020, prior to um, even when we first met, we were just as friends for six months. And then next thing you know, we started talking more. And I was like, wow, I really like this girl. And it worked out. I'm someone that is really like kind of calculated and, Mm -hmm. and, um, Every decision I make, there, I put a lot of thought into it and mm-hmm. basically everything I do. So I had, you know, four years prior to it where for work, I had moved cross country four times. Yep. I knew I was in the place in my life to have a girlfriend. So when I got settled out in Los Angeles, I knew, hey, this is where I wanted to be. That was in March of, of last year. Then I was like, all right, time to actually begin to look like try, time to apply myself. I've never been on any of those dating apps or anything like that. I'm mm. someone that I could be put in front of a brick wall and talk to it for, you know, <laughs> right. A, a, a six hours and have yeah. no issue. So. It's, it's, it's nice that you started out as friends because then you really know that person. Sure. You yeah. know, like when you start dating somebody like bullshit, they're like, no, like this is my first time here. You're like, fuck, you're lying. You're, you're lying. <laughs> no, I've only slept with like two people. You're a fucking lying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in the room. There was at least six guys there. You're lying. You're lying to yourself. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's exactly how it started, and and I think that it worked out best for me. And uh, next, thing you know, asked her on a date, and uh, somehow worked, and now I pay her fifteen grand a month to be my girlfriend. So amazing, it's amazing. just like that. Really that's a good. That's, that's really a thousand healthy. dollars cheaper than mine. That oh, is really? amazing deal. Oh, I gotta get you. I gotta help you out. <laughs> Does she feel threatened at all by your other girlfriend, Ariana Grande, or um, Grande? Yeah, I think Grande. that. Uh, she wants to date Ariana more than me. So we've decided that Fantastic. if Ariana somehow comes back into our lives. Fantastic. Um, Polygamous relations, like fully. Uh, no, she'll just straight up leave me. Oh, wow. Yeah, her hope is that Ariana's kind of into that and, and she'll just leave me for her and I'll have to be happy for her. But if Ariana chooses me, then that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> There's so. definitely a girl that she should be more worried about than Ariana Grande. And that is the Lamborghini that you just purchased. Wow. And I have to pose <laughs> this question to you right now, Mr. Yeah. Courage. Mm. If you had to choose only one. <laughs> Ariana or the Lamborghini? No, your sweet, sweet girlfriend in actuality oh, or the Lamborghini shit. because you are in love yeah. with that car. Um, I mean, shit. <laughs> well, the good news is thankfully, you don't have to choose yeah. anymore. The relationship's over. But thankfully, you <laughs> thankfully, you know, I got the SUV, so it does fit a lot of stuff. So we can move Maddie out of the house in two, two quick trips. <laughs> <laughs> it, won't take, it won't take much to get her out. He's calculated. He yeah, knew exactly yeah. where he was going. How long did you want that car for? I mean, we had laptops in high school, and I knew that um, back in high school, like, f- you know, freshman year, 14, 15, my background was like the Lamborghini logo. Yeah, yeah. I always wanted one and knew that it was something that if I ever was in the position to get one, that was going to be like my big thing. So, you know, year and a half prior, when I first saw the Urus, I was like, wow, I love that car. And then, you know, financial t- financial teams, investments, certain decisions and, 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 and successes that went my way. And I was like, yeah. Now that we got the family taken care of, I'm invested. I've got, you know, I've got stuff going for me that I'm going to do this because you only live once in this life and I'm not going to be 55 and regret <laughs> not being in my, you know, getting my dream car in my mid to late 20s and and enjoying the, you know, fruits of my labor. Love that. I uh I hate applying materialistic things to goals, mm. but it is so nice when you get that thing you've wanted for so long. It is. It is. And 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 and, and you know, I I can, you know, with that too, I wanted to make sure that like my audience knew this wasn't like an impulse decision because it's not a smart investment at all to buy a car like <laughs> no, that. No, no, no. But you know, I, I I bought it in cash. I don't have six years of payments on it. Like yeah. they were, I was like, let me just see what they offer as a financing option, and they're like, 
Yeah, you pay over 50% of it now, and then you pay a lot per month for the next six years of your life, and you have to worry about it. And I was like, no, no thanks, actually. So I got I got the privilege to drive one of these in Miami, mm-hmm. um, and it was actually fantastic. I... <sighs> So the Lamborghini, yep. uh, Rolls Royce. <sighs> I'm sure. It. I'm sure. I think. I think Porsche. They all came out with trucks. Yeah, in, yep. in, in, in what twenty? Was it twenty? They're twenty twenty or twenty nineteen? Well, Porsche's had uh, one for a while. Okay. Twenty nineteen was the year. Was the first year of the yeah. year. Okay. So. Yeah. And 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 I was just like every other kid. You know, I've wanted a Lamborghini my whole life. Yeah. But I was uh, sort of hesitant because Lamborghini, Rolls Royce. These are car companies. These are luxury. Uh, hyper car co- I don't know yep. about rules but they're, they're European foreign car companies of course and so I wasn't sure that the truck right off the bat right the first round right off the rip would be fantastic like I w- even the Cullinan like scares me to, yeah, to yeah. possibly invest in a car that like does Rolls Royce really know how to make a truck no right. you've been making <laughs> you've making, been making cars for 60, 70 years yeah. and god damn it looks like they did it did a real good job so pretty they did it's, uh, so pretty. it's been great so far have you broken the land speed record uh, not quite yet, not quite yet. But the top speed is one seventeen in a controlled environment. Definitely not on the highway on the way back from Napa. Got it's, you. It's it's so it's so crazy to watch you get your dream car, and also outside of that, all the factors that go into getting that dream car. Just watching your explosion this year, and as Logan talked about, people finally catching up to the to the tr- freight train that is courage. How does it? feel to be bucking the trend so hard in 2020 and and because i could relate to this a lot where 2020 is your year everybody is out there right now worst year ever every single thing has happened the pandemic has you know has crushed the world and paralyzed economies and you're just sitting over here just crushing it all the cards have have turned in your favor and it's just been an incredible year for you yeah it's definitely had its ups and downs it's fair share but business wise uh, it's been a blessing for me and i know a lot of other creators in this that you know sure a lot is a lot of industries have suffered but gaming is probably the number one industry that's you know had positive impact from what's gone on so you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt but i viewed it as hey now i'm home everyone else is home so typically where you're like oh you know school started or you know numbers kind of dipped during the week i was like wow i'm going live during school and my viewership is up 50 percent Warzone came out and now you know i signed this deal with youtube last year which was a life-changing opportunity and you know the switch from twitch to youtube has been has been phenomenal so now now it's just I mean, this this past week, due to Among Us and that and that whole hype, crazy. Uh, it's been my biggest biggest month since January 2019, which was my first real takeoff month with Fortnite. Um, that now, you know, this past week, I've averaged like just shy of 40,000 viewers to stream for probably wow. like it's a lot 80 hours of content. So people are just loving it. I uh, I think I told Nate Shot this. <clears throat> I never re- like truthfully, I never really, and I'm sure there's a lot of people watching who who feel this Mm -hmm. i never understood why people would sit and watch other people play video games right this was like four or five years ago before uh gaming live streaming really took off absolutely and because i was like yo if why don't you just go play yourself like if you're gonna do something with video games. Go play, go have fun. Go play with yourself. Yeah. And then Ninja started popping off. You started popping off, and yeah. and and I realized like you like you guys are really professional athletes. Like the the way you guys play these games is so entertaining. Like I'll find myself now like hopping on a stream and watching for ten to thirty minutes just to get my mind off of whatever's going on. Yeah. Streaming in itself, though, for me when I tried it was so draining. It is. How do you have so much energy? Do you get tired? <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, I think that there's certain things that people are like born to do. It sounds really cliche on this, uh, like in, in life. They're like, man, I know I'm, I was born to do this. Or I was born to be a leader or born to, mm. you know, do this sort of thing. When I started streaming, it was just like a natural fit for me. Mm. I, I love interacting with a chat, being able to improvise on the fly. You know, something stupid happens in the game. Give a give a reaction. You know, it, it's all about calculating and knowing like, hey, I know I'm about to do have this. It's going to be a fail. I know what's about to happen. Let me act on it even more so that mm. when it does happen in in five to ten seconds, my chat then explodes and it feels really natural, like not like something that was kind of scripted in the moment. Super calculated, yo! But the always on nature. It is. It's. That, it, it, I mean, I think that that it, it's one of those things that now I'm almost kind of immune to it. Huh. I still love it, and and I'm playing these games that um, at times it's a love or hate thing. So if there's Days where I'm playing a game, like, for example, Warzone, back in March and April and May, I was so in love with that game that I would stream 10 hours and then be like, fuck, I, I can't wait to go live again. Like, how many more hours until I can go to sleep to then go live 
again. Yep. But then now with with my state of Warzone and my love for it, I'm like, <laughs> fuck this stream that used to be ten hours and have no issue. Now I'm like, it's two hours and fifteen minutes in. How many hours do I have to stream yeah. until I can get offline? What's pushing so, you in that direction? Is it people coming at you with origins from the even, corners? Don't even get me started. <laughs> no, you guys I got am. time? Please, yes, please, please. please. <laughs> do it. Um, no, I mean, right now it's there's this thing that really plagues games, in my opinion, called skill based matchmaking. Skill based matchmaking, which really pisses me off. Which basically, anytime you're in the top, it, it basically ruins games for top ten percent of people um, because instead of just going and matching people via a connection based matchmaking, where it's like, hey. I'm this close to George. That's that's how close our connections are. So we have a good connection to each other. Instead, it's like, well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and 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 even though George is right here and we're both searching at the same time, because I'm in such a higher league than George. I'm sorry, George. I'm pr pretending like you're really bad at it's okay. Probably, I'm actually terrible. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm going to go ahead and match the guy that's all the way in downtown LA, just because of skill. And you're going to have a three to four times worse connection. To the game wow. because oh, so, so it's not even about uh, the more skilled players that, battling each other. That, it's, it's about oh, it's about the connection. That's the start of it. So that's okay. that's part okay. one. Then there's the instead of you're playing these games where a battle royale when you have 150 players, half the joy of it is you don't know who you're going to run into next. You don't know if you're about to face Michael fucking Jordan or my fat ass in your next fight. If right, this was right, basketball, right. so meanwhile now every fight I'm getting into it's, it's people that are in the top 10 percent of these games. But then the issue is I wouldn't mind it if there was something to show for it. So imagine if you tune into my stream yep. and you're maybe a new viewer and you're going, man, why have, why is he getting shit on so bad? Well, if I play Warzone, I can look in the top right and it says, oh, this is a diamond lobby or a top 1% lobby to at least legitimize why I am in such a sweat fest and stressful environment. This is kind of like, and I, might, I might be wrong, but this yeah. is kind of like watching the Olympics and watching them run. And you're like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. But if you put an average runner next to them, you're like, oh, fuck, these guys are fast. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You no, know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. This is, it's a really common complaint. There's a lot of gamers talking about this. Do you think SBMM like forces people to get better, though? Uh, I, I definitely think like the the average gaming person is way better than back in 2007, 2008, Absolutely. like when I was playing like Halo 3, yeah. right? But... What I think it really struggles with is that it burns people out way more. Mm. It makes gaming a way more negative experience because you are not, you, you can't, like, for example, a 10 win streak is like something that just doesn't happen because three games in, they put you in, there are papers coming out and things that haven't been proved yet, but that are, are these studies that the skill based matchmaking doesn't just put you in the highest lobbies. It'll say, hey, you know what? On game four, he's doing so well that we're going to randomly pair him with two people that are actually worse than should be in his lobby. To cut him off. To the... basically sandbag him, to then bring him down, to then make it so that when he gets back into that normal lobby, he, it like it like is like a hit for your addiction, you know, and makes you keep playing. When I watch you, Ninja, Tim the Tatman. Yeah. Well, not really Tim. I, not really Tim, <laughs> Do we do not like uh, Tim? Kind of sucks. <laughs> they have this ongoing thing that's Sorry, constantly. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim's fuck, pretty. Yeah, good. fuck Tim. Yeah. Tim's at home. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Tim doesn't give a fuck what we think. <laughs> uh, I I watch to see y'all fucking pwn noobs. Yep. I want to see you destroy people, like yep. uh, like obliterate them. It's my favorite because they don't stand a chance. Yeah. So this, I, I totally see what you're saying, just as, as an outsider, like how this could, uh, you know, make it much less entertaining. Why uh, why is Call of Duty doing that? Do, do we know the? It's not the, the only theory? game. Either. The, I mean, it's the in theory? games. It's in games. Call of Duty. It's in Apex Legends. I'm it's such in a noob. League of I'm Legends. Sorry. It's in, does Fortnite? It, does Fortnite do SBI? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so the, Fortnite. Fortnite switched to skill based matchmaking. So, you know the. There, I'm sure they have more information, and there's things that retain uh, players better. It makes casuals probably have a better experience, like the lowest level of skill, um, because it caters to them instead of them going in and matching with a random 150 people. Where let's say there's two of me in the lobby, that'll beat you know 80 percent of those noobs. Now they can just go into these lobbies where it's uh, everyone's playing with, with their eyes closed. It's basically it is the kind of skill level of it. Yeah. Um, but it, it really sucks for certain, you know situations another one for a creator is like there's moments where you might be joining in with someone who is a celebrity or has now caught on to your stuff and is like hey can, can we get some matches in so they then join up with you and you're excited for a great session together but your skill-based matchmaking let's say you're in the bottom 20 percent you get brought to my that's level. the big oh. that's the biggest problem because so, i watched you play with dobrik yeah 
you had a game with Dobrik mm-hmm. and he brought RPGs out, which, yeah. which was a great thing for him because he ended up clutching a dub with the RPG, yep. which was amazing to watch. But I deal with that too because I play with people that are much better than me and I their lobbies get based on their skill sets. So I'm playing Michael Jordan. I don't want to play fucking Michael Jordan. I want to play like like Scottie Pippen or somebody a little bit lower. Yeah, we we there was an opportunity for us to play with like a massive level, like dream type of scenario for a collaboration with a celebrity. And Nate Shaw and I were talking about it. And while this was being planned, we were literally like, hey, we're gonna make we're gonna make set we we have to make second accounts. We have to make fresh uh, accounts with no stats so that we have no one percent skill based matchmaking so we can have a pleasurable gaming experience mm. because if we don't then that person that we play with is going to hate their lives for the two hours that they're there and then we're never going to play again wow uh, you, I, you remember when you went to the arcade back in the day yeah. and then you started a game and they would ask you medium regular yeah, yeah. or expert yeah. yeah i think they should just do this so that way your audience can see you play in the regular mode and then you could just do like a hey if you guys donate to this amount we're going to go to expert mode and, the, and the, you know, you know what the beauty of it is? That's the that's the difference between a social playlist. Like if you ever played Halo, they had social playlists where you go in and match people of all sorts of ranks and just play fun little custom games. But then ranked they had player. a ranked playlist yeah. where it was one to fifty. So if I was a fifty and I joined a lobby, my little cousin would be like, "Yeah, you're talking shit. Well, I'm gonna invite my cousin Jack in," and they're all like twenty fours. And then I join in as a fifty, and it's like, "Oh, oh shit." shit. <laughs> This guy's the real fucking deal. He just walk in big dick status. Exactly, but <laughs> that's like, hilarious. All these ga- like a lot of these games don't have a ranking system nowadays, so there's nothing to show for it. It's like everyone gets a participation trophy, but there's no real chance. Welcome to 2020. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll- you're certainly big enough to call Activision, right, and say, "Hey, listen, I'm going to play with Dobrik this week." Man, <laughs> as long as they keep making billions in microtransactions, they're going to not care that. Courage is that the top one percent hate skill based matchmaking. Mm. So a- shout out Ander Nickel, Ander, if you're watching this right now, you guys got to do something. He's a, he's the head of uh, <clears throat> brand over at Activision. I talk to him quite often. Did you? Uh, um, I, I completely I, I, forgot. Yeah, what I was going to ask. Go it's okay. Yeah, go, uh, go for it. Right. Take a five. Go for uh, it. I want to ask you something about your interests because <laughs> yeah. um, Evan is a gamer, mm-hmm. Dwarf Mamba. I know. Upstairs room is right above us. There's yeah. a good chance he could be literally right above you, and he loves you. Uh, and I watch him go from game to game to game to game to game. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I've kind of hinted at and I've mentioned it on this podcast before, I used to get, I used to play World of Warcraft. I used to be yeah. addicted to Pokemon, uh, obviously Tetris. Same. Yeah, all these things. But I noticed my interests were super uh, centralized. I'd be, I'd be in my, into my one game, and and I didn't really feel like switching. Yeah. What about gaming in general? attracts you to all these different games like how come your your, your niche isn't uh so uh focused yeah i think uh that's a really good question that a lot of different people would have a lot of different answers to right there's there's streamers that are called like variety streamers mm. where basically any new game that comes out any any type of genre their audience will just follow them to it and it's kind of like the for a lot of people it's the pinnacle of streaming because they have the freedom to play whatever they want so their chance of burning out as it's called um for for streamers is is way lower in my opinion because mm. I get sick of Warzone, but if I switch from Warzone to some random single player game, I will lose seventy percent of my audience because I have such a battle royale Warzone audience. focused audience. Mm. Whereas there are certain streamers like Co Carnage, Summit, XQC that these guys can literally play, you know, Hello Kitty Private Island, <laughs> and they're at forty thousand viewers, and a, then they'll switch to World of Warcraft and hold. 80% of the viewership, then they'll switch to Overwatch. And it doesn't matter what they play. Huh. So for me right now with the way I approach things is, listen, if a game blows up like Among Us is the hot thing right now, it's not. It's stupid of me not to go and try the game with other creators. It's an extremely collaborative game where you have 10 big YouTubers, streamers, anything in one lobby at a time. It would be naive of me and and and, and also just unfair to myself who's been a gamer my whole life and loves playing all sorts of games to not go and try it. And then just so happy that you know, it, it lit and now it's it, it's crazy with, with how it's been performing. Um, so in a way, but, in a way, you're 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 playing smart. You're playing you're you're moving where the attention is. I mean, listen, yes or no. You don't really if there's one thing you do in this world, you don't really work for free. So True. most yeah. times I'm playing games, I'm streaming. Yep. So uh, there's a couple games I'll play off stream right now. I, I just played World of Warcraft the last couple months waiting for the new expansion to come out um, that I'll probably stream a bit coming up. And it's fucking 
just as much of an addiction as when I was bro, 14. We you know? could geek about this forever. Hey, bro. Like, listen, how, new expansion like, uh, in a month. Come play, Logan. No, no, what no. What else are we doing? No, that, that game ruined my life. It ruined yeah. my life. I'm, Trust me, it, it, it ruined me. <laughs> it, I'm thankful for it, honestly, because after my like little two-year stint of World of Warcraft was done, I was I I I as a fourteen year old I knew what addiction was. Mm. It, it probably honestly was the reason I didn't do drugs and drink in high school like the rest of my friends. Because yeah. my mom was like, "Yo, alcoholism runs in our family." Like, uh, my 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 uh, my dad was addicted. His my uncle was addicted, and I the word addicted until you experience it, like you 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 don't know if it applies to you or not. Right, right. And gaming uh, specifically, mm. World of Warcraft, I just got so sucked in. Yeah. And so you play off stream. How do you balance that and 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 know when you need to throw a red flag up? I I've taken this to I've it's seven a.m. right now and I'm not even streaming. Yeah, no, I, I thankfully haven't had too many of those. Um, I typically stay on my schedule pretty well, but it's more like, hey, if I do a stream from nine a.m. to two p.m. in the day, then I'll get off, do a bus- couple business calls, mm. the new YouTube video will go out or something, hang out with with my girlfriend, then she'll go. She's taking Chinese right now, Chinese lessons. So she'll go start her Chinese lesson. Next so thing you know, cool. I'm in a World of Warcraft raid, and I'm like, babe, this will be three hours, so keep working after that, and <laughs> then I'll get off at like 9, 9.30. What, what do you play as? Uh, Blood Elf Rogue. Uh, it's Horde. Oh, mean. Illidan. Mean. Stabbing motherfuckers. DPS. Can I stab curse? Motherfuckers. Yeah, 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 of course. Stab yeah. Motherfuck- you, can, you can stab a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, sure. Man. I saw some knives when I walked out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, you, do you ever look into the future and see this VR world and be like, I'm going to be killing this shit? I wanted to ask him about this. Yeah, or do guess- you think you're just going to sit that one out and Bro, be like, nah, fuck that? No, nah, VR, VR it has has already had a couple of explosion moments on streaming, uh, one of which is called this like VR chat. And it's basically literally just a lobby that you can go into. You can make any avatar for yourself. You can make yourself look like anything you want, talk like anything you want. And it's got the full body tracking. So like, it looks like if, if a break dancer goes in this game and starts break dancing, it looks like the character is break dancing right in front of you. I was saying this cause we did a VR session and I go, there's going to be a time in, in the house yeah. in the future where there's always going to be a VR room in the house Absolutely. where there's cameras everywhere and you could literally visit family members. So it would be a custom living room that yeah. would be in every house. And then you could sit on the couch talking to your loved ones that's in Australia and all that stuff. And I think that's going to be crazy. Have you guys ever seen like Ready Player One? Oh, yeah. Great of course. Movie. So, of course. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. So that's like... And, and it, it, what's funny is like Elon Musk has even talked about this and life being a simulation and stuff. But I think like VR and AR is a perfect example of of with how far technology has gone. Think back to when we were young or just before. I mean, Mike's pretty old, so move the rest oh, of us. Shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, when Mike was 15 or when we were just born, yes. um, <laughs> these games that were like 8-bit and, and, and 2D yeah. and barely had anything to them, and you can, and, and they were on these cartridges that were like 12 megabytes. And you had to blow them up. Exactly. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't working yet. Yep. Of course, yeah. You know what's funny is, the the graphics it was so crap but during scary games i'd still be scared as shit oh, of course. i mean that's all our brains knew but now you have vr and and ar and these things keep improving and now they're wireless and soon they're going to be probably just one strip you wear over your eyes and next you know you'll have a haptic suit like in ready player one that elon musk has talked about this and there's games like the sims which is simulating real life well with how far <laughs> technology has gone in the last 25 years with how exponential it's been, there's been more technological advances in the last 25 years than there were in the thousand years prior. So if you take the year 3000, which is, you know, whatever, a thousand years from now, what is to say that they can't simulate consciousness in these games? And right now we are not little Jimmy's Sims game that is played that is... By another civilization. Yo, by another, by, it's fu- not, it by is just the case. Fuck the year 3000. You know. That... That'll happen within exactly. within a hundred with 150 years. Yeah, I swear to God, it's it's insane. The VR place that he's talking about, I think it's mm-hmm. called True VR. Uh, you should go okay. if you haven't yet. They put you in these suits, mm-hmm. uh, hands, I think yeah, shoulders, shoes, some yeah. shoes, knee, and they give you a, a gun. And when you pull the trigger on on the gun in real life, it uh, recoils. It, yeah. sh- it shakes. So when you put on this uh, suit with your teammates. You literally run around this giant room and actually play within the game. My question to you is, when that advances to a point where you could have your VR room in your house, yeah. and, and who knows, maybe you're on a treadmill or there's like some sort of ball where you can run around. And I'm that's just going to let you know, glitching is going to hurt. That, it's going to hurt badly. So, so, that, so that's what my question is. Do you play video games because you can have this high adrenaline energy rush? 
essentially being static, seated, or do you think when VR is at a place where people, if they want to be good and want to win, if they have to be really active, you exit the game sweating, you play for three hours, you've had your workout for the day. Do you think that will decrease the amount of people who are interested in playing that type of game? Um, thankfully, I think that there's an audience for everything. Hmm. I mean, I'm not interested in mobile gaming. Mobile gaming is like the biggest industry in the world, like it, it, like uh, for, for video games. It's insane. But I'm not interested in VR. There are people that have every VR headset and are up to date on every VR news. And you can't even begin to think about some of something stuff that they know that I don't about VR. Do you think it would be more popular than the static in your chair at the computer gaming? Uh, it'll come down to price. I think barrier of entry of VR and paying for something like that will will always hinder the ability for people to get in. Mobile gaming is the biggest because, well, everyone's got a damn phone and a lot of these games are free to play. So... You just have your phone, you download a game, and now you're mobile gaming. Mm. Whereas a console, console is a three hundred to five hundred dollar barrier of entry. A PC is like eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollars, and VR is probably more on that level. So mm. ease of access. Yeah, mm. I, I'm just picturing like imagine an arena and all these people have VR headsets on and they're diving Bro. over barriers and like like like, like war. You literally took that image out of my head. I said to myself, "This I go. I don't." And at, mind you, I'm, I love sports. I love playing sports. And sometimes I like watching basketball. I would never watch a basketball game again. If people are running around shooting each other and just like, you could see two screens, one of their actual point of view and then one what they're seeing in the game. I mean, dude, think of like the Ro the Romans and, uh, you know, gladiators and, and, and yeah. gladiators and shit. Like imagine if I know it's so crazy to say and someone will clip this and be like, wow, that's the most virgin shit I've ever heard. But like, <laughs> imagine that, but you're, you're sitting in VR in like a Coliseum and you're watching people fight like that right in front of you. Like it's almost like you're... You know, a viewer or an experiencer. Insane. The next Logan Paul versus KSI fight is in VR. <laughs> wow. You know? Yo, that is not, that's not too far-fetched. I swear to God, 50 years from now, I'll be fighting KSI again. <laughs> and our audience can be at home, slip on a headset and be in the stadium. No, in the front row. Forget the stadium. What if they're seeing from your point of view? They can switch from back and forth. Well, now I have to be wearing a headset while I'm fighting. No, you're, I'm, you're in a VR room. Hey, no, 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 I'm talking about me actually. Uh -huh. And they could, they could, jo they could join in the stadium and be the, be at the front row in the stadium. That's already, in that's Australia. already happening oh, that's too. Crazy. The digital audience is happening for the NBA bubble. Have you seen that? Yep. So you can yep. actually buy tickets to the finals, sit in front of a uh, camera at your house, then be in the front row on a screen at the uh, in the NBA bubble. Insane, yeah. crazy, insane, crazy. I even think about. I, I talked about this because uh, I, I just invested a lot of money into Pokemon cards and. People ask me, obviously, like, do you think this market's going to crash? Historically, the answer is no. It, it absolutely could. I, I say I don't think so, especially because the 25th anniversary is next year. But imagine when you're in VR and you turn to your left, you're playing the Pokemon game, you turn to your left and there's your Charizard. Your Charizard, your boy, your, your pet, five foot seven fucking fire dragon standing next to you battling yeah. a Blastoise. Like, that would be a bad fight for the Charizard. For the Charizard. Oh, it'd be bad. Just being a, he could know. use fly. And, and, and escape a couple of texts. But sure, but, yeah. but the point is, the possibilities, I mean, just for life in general, especially for VR and that um, immersive world, it, are endless. And listen, you invested in the Pokemon cards, which is the number one earning media franchise of all time, Ever. like $100 billion. Plus dollars. 90, plus yeah. $90 billion ahead so, of all of them. I think you'll be all right. I think it'll... I think, <laughs> I think, this I think just in. Something tells me. Just crashes. Pokemon is pretty big. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. But yeah, insane, bro. We'll see what happens. I mean, I, I think to 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 completely you know be such a hater on it there are some people that are like man vr gaming is so shit yada yada yeah sure this of course we're on, the, we're on the entry level yeah. like vr gaming is if you equi like put the equivalent back to like playing a game from the 19 late 1970s right now but 20 years from now i think that people's minds will change a lot i think people are underestimating it we we played at the place in santa monica that he was talking about it was amazing yeah it was fun it was cool, a lot of cool, fun they had coolest a, experience of my life they had fa like if you're on top of a building and there's wind blowing they have fans set up if you get close to a fire that's in the game there's heaters in the room that crazy there's no because smells yo, you could be it's you could be an absolute pussy in real life like you could just suck your whatever but you put on this headset and you're the shit. That's what, zombies are coming at you. You yeah. take out your chainsaw. You chainsaw on zombies in this game. You're using a shotgun. Doof. Bro, I was hip firing. <laughs> I'm in there. I'm hip firing. I'm like, doof, doof. And I, it was, the, it was, I felt like the coolest guy in the world. Yeah. I want to rewind, re rewind the clock with you. Sure. Because I think you have a pretty interesting story, how you even got into all this and, and knowing that you, you were this personality and you had this energy that people liked. Yeah. You were in college mm. and you were working for... 
what is a media firm? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, Major League Gaming was the first company that I had an internship for, so that that, that I would kind of count. And then what happened? Nate Shot kind of hinted at this, but I, I want to hear the story from you. Where one day I, you, you you like hopped in, right? You you substituted for someone who wasn't there that day, and yeah, yeah. So I was. Uh, I've always been to multi camera production. I love mm. kind of what you just what you guys just experienced, right? You're going about your day. There's a great crew that gets everything set up, but I love that you can just sit down. We're good. We're good. And action, and we're mm. and we're ready to go. That's what I loved way more than taking film because I went. To, I was going to school for media and film, so. Other things that I like about film, sure, but it really grinds my gears on a lot of film is kind of hurry up and wait. And it's like, all right, break down, set up, you know, and come on in, do this 38 times. All right, break down, set up. Uh, that that tilted me. So I got into multi-camera production, was going more down that track. And I had been an unpaid media intern at Major League Gaming, which is based on 34th and Park in New York City. And uh, I was a video editing intern. I was cutting up highlights on the weekends with no air conditioning during like their major events. And I was like, man, I want to be there one day. And uh, and one day, Chris Puckett, the main host of the show, he was the only on-air talent at Major League Gaming at the time. He uh, he was going to be homesick. And we spent the whole morning setting up for the show that was at like 3 p.m. And they were kind of having the decision right in front of me. You know, Ron and Brian, who were the producer and, and director of the show, was on the phone with Chris. And they were like... I mean, we can cancel. And like, it was one of those moments that you kind of see in like a Disney movie where one of the characters like blurts Steps up, blurts something out of their mouth and is like, <gasps> I literally was like, I think I can do it. <gasps> Did I really just fucking say that? And they were like, Chris, you like, they were like, you, you, what do you think? And he's like, hell yeah, let him have a shot. And then I wound up hosting the show like 40 days with him in a row until I went back to school after that. So that was like my first on camera wow. experience for an actual company. I did stuff back in high school too. That's so cool. I remember with the nuts. Fortnite, uh, what are they called? Pro Am, the Pro Am. Uh, yeah. I think it was the first time I saw you cast, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Holy shit, this guy's really got something." Yeah, that one. That the, the first Pro Am I wound up playing in and got second, which was crazy. That was half a million for for uh, my charity, which was the Aneurysm and ABM Foundation. And then uh, from then on out, the World Cup, everything like that. Yeah, I was I was the, 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 like their number one casting partner alongside a uh, great great guy dr lupo great friend of, of course, mine of course um so yeah casting is still a, a total passion of mine but if there's one thing it's like I, I it's crazy to think but if i can be paid x amount to stream for two hours and do a sponsored stream you know casting rates just don't really go to <laughs> what some of these brands will offer for for me to stream so it's like hey do you want to go cast an entire weekend for three days travel you know on plane everything for this much or literally do two two hour streams for the same rate what what would you rather do and i'm like okay i mean <laughs> staying home is nice so so bringing it back for you like blurting out and change was that the moment that kind of changed your life yeah yeah for sure um that's that, crazy to me because was, we always speak this out to people yeah you can't let fear dictate your future and you stepped up and changed your whole fucking life by just stepping up and just being like i, I could do it guys because yeah. a lot of people will be paralyzed and they'll be like, no, I'll just sit here. S summarize to succinctly, never, ever be afraid to hear no. Yeah. Never. I, I, wow, I, that's I, crazy. Never. Like, who, bro, who cares? Yeah. I think I could do it. Nah, not this time. All right, well, fuck. I'll try again next oh, time. Back. The 6 9 thing. I came up to you. I was like, yo, man, I think I could do this. I, I said, I said <laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> you probably could, <laughs> but I believe in I believe in you, Georgie. Don't let me down. But even and if you did you, it, even if you said no, that wouldn't even that would do nothing to like dictate our friendship at all. It'd be like, absolutely. no, right, okay, cool. But it, absolutely, and also, yeah. also, and I'm sure you have people come up to you in the streets all the time and ask you for you know god knows what I, you know i'm sure you're at dinner and people come up and pitch you an app and or they want to connect we'll, with you we'll get a lot of business emails and people in my chat and of course all sorts of stuff like that yeah if you're if you're willing and you have uh the balls to be able to ask someone something and you put yourself out there you have to also be willing to be receptive to being shut down that's 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 kind of my rule my, my thing is if you have the audacity to approach me after dinner and pitch me an app you I'll, I'm going to have the audacity to say no if I don't Absolutely. feel like it, right? Absolutely. It's it's a two-way street. Yep. Nothing's personal. Be willing to put yourself out there and don't be afraid to, to fail and, and, and hear no as an answer. Yeah. The chemistry you have with Lupo when you're on those streams, with all your boys when you're, when you're gaming. Yeah. Where does that come from? Is it only from uh, that internet connection when you guys game yeah or because mike and i have a good uh chemistry because we hang out in real life we're roommates we hop in this podcast it's the same bullshit we talk about yeah 
Is it just because you're always just streaming and chatting it up? Yeah, I mean, before the Big C, there were so many events that were going on, and and we we would also hang out at those. So mm-hmm. you know, it was always a good time getting drinks, and we'd go, and that would kind of m- mentally reset you. You'd get to meet the fans, you'd get to participate in these awesome in t- in you know in person tournaments or cast or be in these great locations, and you know, next thing you know, those all stop. So it's been a little bit tougher, but. Yeah, a lot of that just came from, hey, I'm a fan of what you do. You're a fan of what I do. Our audiences have been saying we should game together. Let's give it a shot. And now a game like Among Us, which is going on right now, which is these 10-person lobbies. It's like so many creators I've I've been able to collaborate with that I've dreamed of in the last three weeks has been insane um, to, to be joining up with. And it's the idea of like a rising tide raises all ships. You'll go on any YouTube video that I've had with people for the last two and a half years, and you will find their link in the description saying, hey, you like how I banter with Lupo? Go sub to Dr. Lupo. I don't ask that anyone from retur- in, in return, but if Lupo then starts getting more eyes on him and his shit starts growing, then guess Great. what? People are going to see more of me and come and find me more. Success breeds success. Yeah. It's part of the reason I love having him on. Yep. He, he's a creator. He's hungry, and he just amplifies everything this podcast does. Of course. Uh, um, yeah, I, w- I was always impressed with how you guys got along so well. Yeah. I, I have to ask, when you guys go out in real life, you hang out in real life, are y'all getting fucked up? Are y'all like partying? Are y'all going crazy? Well, well, uh, listen, I mean, shit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I definitely do. No, I, I think uh, everyone's a little bit different, right? It's, it's, you got Lupo, who's, who's a dad. He's more, he's more, he's, 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 he's in his mid thirties. You know, what, what's him getting hammered do for him right now in his life? Mm-hmm. He's like, you know what? I'll have a couple whiskey drinks and then I'm going to go, go to bed with my beautiful wife and, wake up nice and early for the next day with my cup of coffee. Right. But then yeah. you've got younger creators and, and these people that are now in this and they're and they're working hard, but playing hard on the weekends too. I, I had my phase of that back when I was casting, you know, traveling 27 weeks of the year. It's mm-hmm. like, Hey, you do a huge event Sunday night. Oh, there's tabs open from the different sponsors and companies at this. Great. Let me get a double vodka Red Bull and uh, <laughs> a shot of 40, like 1942. And you're like, Great. Here we go. Sure. When, um, you were, when you were single, was it ever like a, like a, like a nice line to like, Yo, do you have a game to a girl at a bar? Oh yeah, how does that I like? Mean, how does that work? Out so there? we went to the uh, Nobu White Party on Fourth of July last. Th- that's year. a hot party. It was. That's hot. By the way, that's yeah. very hard to get into. Yeah, yeah, next to yeah. It was. It was. It was an incredible experience. Our buddy, uh, I'm sure you guys have met him, Kyle McCarthy, who's who he runs all like the the parties at Notch's house. Mm. That, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's a great friend of mine. And he was like, "Hey, you guys want to come to this?" And I had no idea what it was. And I was like, "You know, I think I'm just gonna have a barbecue with the boys." And then one of our other buddies who was going was like, "I don't think you realize, Jack, you do want to go to." Like, <laughs> so we're like, "All right, show let's up go. in red." You're like, "Fucking yeah. jacket." Oh, so man. Uh, we were going to that, and we were taking a party bus there, and uh, we had a table for like 25 of us when, uh, when we got there, and. I was like, what am I going to say to these people? Like, I'm looking around and them like, there's Saquon Barkley. They're like Carl Anthony Towns, who we had just had on the Courage and Nade Shot mm-hmm. show. I'm like dapping him up. I'm like, is that Sean Mendez? Are those the Hadid, <laughs> like Gigi and Bella Hadid? I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What, what is my fat ass doing here? And at that time, Fortnite was at its still peak. So I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm just going to go up to girls and be like, you know, you ever heard of Fortnite? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm Fortnite. I am Fortnite. I they're not gonna. They're just yeah. gonna be like you're Fortnite. <laughs> like it's a DJ name, like Skrillex. Like wow, you're Fortnite. Hi. <laughs> didn't work. So hey, it, it you, didn't work. No, no, no I definitely no, no. left by myself. No, that no, yours are no, no. slightly yeah, yeah. close to mine. Instead yeah. of saying Fortnite, I'd be like, do you know a four play? And yeah. she's like, yeah. Like, Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Hey, that could work. That could work. But there was a time where that wouldn't work. I have a hard time believing it won't now. Like, honestly, ga- gaming yeah. and gamers have sprung into the mainstream. Celebrities. As cool as cool people. Celebrities. Yeah, like Athletes. Athletes. Seriously. Like, there was a time where it was like, oh, game, pfft, nerd. Now it's like, oh, you fucking you game? How much money do you make? You're, oh, you're cool. You have a personality. Let's yeah, hang out. Yeah. Also, you know, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Nobu. Wow. Easy Tiger. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. Dude, I got it. I, I, like, I brought all my friends from Arizona. We come. I, I was mm-hmm. like, you know what, guys? Don't worry about it. Like, I got it. The bill came. And I don't mind paying. A big bill if I invite my friends, but I was fucking starving when the bill came. Like, like the guy goes, yes, yeah, the steak is for everybody. It's a shareable steak. Comes out, it's some four ounces. I thought the I thought the chef wanted me to taste it, bro. Welcome to the fine gourmet delicacies of uh, Not, Los Angeles luxury, dude. Restaurant. I went back to Jack in the Box on the way home. Seven dollars eighty three cents. Just right across the street. Fucking in heaven. <laughs> I know. I know what Jack in the Box are talking about. It's right across the street. <laughs> <laughs> My ass ain't there, dude. I couldn't. Uh, I I could not do it. I couldn't do it. Yeah, that adds up quick. Most common misconception about gamers. 
Big dicks. Uh, Huge. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm real average. Just a warning. I'm um, not even average. No, no, no. There's there, there's there's some out there. Uh, I mean, I think the one that you just mentioned is like, listen, we, we yeah, I play a fuck ton of video games, but you better believe I can be put in any social setting sure. and more than handle my uh, hold my own and handle my own. Um, I think that that's a big one that is is going away, right? We're we're not all just shut ins who do that. It's like that that the the way that it used to be in the '90s and the movies and the 2000s, where the gamer was in the dark basement, is has come and gone, right? Yeah. Um, I think that uh, I think that that's a big one. Another one is like this can't be a career. Um, listen, mm. right now, right now, if you're working a side hustle and your streaming starts to take off a bit, and 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 you're making, let's just let's just put you at a thousand dollars a month on the side that you're making, like. You're technically a, becoming a streamer, right? You're, you're you're consistent. You're holding a second job that's now supplemental uh, income, which is huge for people, and that's how the dream starts. You know, I didn't become the the audience at the size that I am and get a contract, you know, with, the, with YouTube that I, that that I now have overnight. You know, I had my four viewer streams, three viewer streams for a while. And you, you're doing it because you loved back. it first, and then, oh yeah, of course. Does it's, it ever when you're like gaming and you're like doing a brand deal or noticing this? 40,000 people watching. Did you ever just have a moment to yourself and like, damn, that's a this stadium. Is cr- that's crazy. A, that's a stadium. How many people are sitting yeah. back? And w- there's also a question for you. This is just yeah. hit me right now. Do you ever get nervous? Thankfully, uh, that's one thing I can say for sure that I, I don't really feel nervous. When I used to be a commentator and I'd be hearing the director in my ear, you know, hey, you know, we're coming on, coming to you in five, four. I would feel like that little bit of butterflies for the second, but then I would go from, you know, Jack to ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Impulsive Live from Logan Paul's fucking garage. There's about do you want yep. a job? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'll, you know, I'll, if you can, I'll just put my shit back and I'll see you guys later. It was a good two shows. <laughs> if you can survive and conquer that uh in your ear, five, four, three, because to me and to him, he's done that is the most stressful oh, shit ever is. when you yeah. are having to listen. And also speak yep. about the topic at hand. If you can do that, you could probably do anything. Oh yeah, and then when it's live and you know for Ooh. Fortnite World Cup, the Ar- the Arthur Ashe Tennis Stadium last year, thirty million dollars on the line, ten million concurrent viewers, seventeen thousand people sold out in the arena. My 30, 30 of my family members there. It's like ninety fucking degrees in this tennis stadium. Always. I'm sweating my ass off. It's so humid. <laughs> And I'm just like trying not to lose my voice because they got those haze machines going off. So like what the audience doesn't know is is Lupo was literally getting like steroids injected into him prior to the show (laughs) starting because literally his voice was shot from just the rehearsals and I was feeling my voice go. So I didn't speak a word for the four hours leading up to broadcast. I was having like the the singers like throat spray, the extreme edition. I had 84 cough drops. Of course. And. I'm sitting there going, oh my God, I'm about to have the biggest championship Sunday of my career. We're about to break every viewership record, the biggest day in my career. And I don't know if my voice is going to work when I start speaking. Wow. And I'm just like, <laughs> and they're like five, four. And I feel that moment of nervousness. And when I had done a rehearsal earlier in the day, it was like, ladies. And I could feel like the raspiness. And I just started and I was like, ladies and gentlemen. And I just felt like the full boom of my voice. Turned like, into Bob Menry. I fucking got this yeah. shit. Let's yeah. go. And, you, and then it crossed. You painted such a beautiful picture in my head. Like I actually pictured all of this stuff happening. Thank you. Wow. I, d- I definitely have done a lot of play-by-play commentary and uh, that helps you paint a picture for people to understand. You, you talk about the nerves and that the nerves don't bother you, but you also do talk a lot about anxiety. Yeah. Especially on Twitter because I, I follow all your tweets mm-hmm. and you struggle with anxiety. Yeah. If it's not a countdown before thousands of fans or a live stream in front of thousands of fans. Yep. What is it you think that causes the anxiety that you struggle with? I mean, I've definitely had a big bout with it in the past few weeks. You've been, you, you, you've reached out and been so helpful. So I'm really grateful. And so many people online, I, I'm someone that loves to share my audience when the highs are great. You know, if I can share that, I just bought my dream car and this Lamborghini, I can sure as hell share to my young audience that I'm struggling with anxiety and that they're not alone on this, right? It would be, uh, it would be stupid of me to use my platform in only the positive ways and be that typical like bullshit influencer that yep. uh, you know I'm not being real with my audience. So uh, yeah, it's been it, it had been pretty rough. Last week was probably the toughest like week of sleep I've ever had in my life. Um, and my anxiety is that I get like catastrophic thoughts. So for example, I'll wake up one day and I'll be like, wow. Why do why do why does my arm feel weird? And I'm like, God, am I, do I have a did I have a fucking stroke? That's what my mind tells me. It's like, right. did I have a an aneurysm overnight? Or I have a uh, I'll I'll go to bed and feel my heartbeat because I finally slow down because I never disconnect, which I'm learning that I need to disconnect more. So I finally slow down and then I can feel like my body doing its natural movements, and I'm like, 
well, why do I feel my heart beat? Is my heart beating out of my chest? I'm going to have a heart attack. That's what my mind says. So it's health anxiety is 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 one for me. I have a fear of, of bad news where like if I go to the doctor, they're going to find something bad. And I know it's counterproductive because you want them to find whatever bad it could be as early as possible. But then I have a fear of going because of the fear of hearing that I have something bad. Are you a hypochondriac? My girlfriend is. And now that we've spent so much time together, she's definitely rubbed off on me. I'm the hypochondriac. Right. Yes, we we joke about that. Uh, you know, I've helped her with uh, get, getting her please and thank yous better. Um, and and she's given me hypochondriac and <laughs> it rubbed off. It's you a really what, good trade off. One thing that's that's good too is you don't just talk about uh, how you're feeling that day or or you know um, the situation you're dealing with. You talk about coping tactics. Yeah. And you actually share the coping tactics that are working for you. Mm-hmm. No phone one hour before bed. Yep. Have, and you found that helped a lot. Yeah. yeah, reading reading before bed. We have these lights um, called Casper lights that um, automatically dim for 45 minutes before bed. So you just flip them over and they'll slowly start dimming across 45 minutes. So it'll help your body like naturally slow Wind down. down. Mm. Um, reading, I just started reading the book Dune because there's that movie coming out with Beautiful. Timothy, Timothy Chalamet Classic. and uh, Dennis Villeneuve. Yep, the, the Villeneuve director. or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be something that I look forward to. Um, exercise. Gotta, exercise, which has been... You know, I fell off due to my grind of World of Warcraft, but now it's been, you know, kicking back into gear. So that was me. Uh, yesterday, I did. I, I also kicked caffeine last week, which I'm doing all this. My anxiety is bad. And then I'm also having caffeine withdrawal. So I'm like waking up feeling more sluggish than ever. I have a ripping headache. I'm trying to get back into working out I'm without caffeine, barely sleeping how overnight. Much, how much caffeine were you uh, intaking? And, you know, I wasn't taking any extreme amount, like one, let's say one sugar-free energy drink a day, which was between 80 and 120 milligrams of caffeine. That's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. For and somebody with anxiety. Light. But yeah, but when when this is happening to me and it starts to, I'm, I was filming a uh, commercial for Chipotle and I'm sitting here and I'm going like, wow, I'm on four hours of sleep and I'm someone that's on set that I never want to be the, the, the issue. I'm, I always try to be high spirits. Let's get everyone through this. Let's do this right. You know, we're going to need to take a shot 20 fucking times. I'm not going to complain. I don't care. Yep. But like that day, I was dragging ass, and I wasn't being an issue on set, but I wasn't being my normal self. So right. I was feeling my nighttime anxiety impact my day to day work. And when that was starting to happen, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna attack this from all fronts." So two different therapists, talked to a psychiatrist, talked to my doctor, got a weighted blanket, got a lavender diffuser, started working out again, Did got rid of, of the phone before bed. You know, uh, 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 started taking a, a licorice root supplement in the morning to help my cortisol levels during the day. I, I have attacked this from every goddamn front you can imagine because, and now I've had two nights of sleep in a row, great nights of sleep. The last four of the five have been great, so it's I'm improving for sure, and I can say that like I'm not having that on edge or that, that kind of jittery feeling of like anxiety like That's, I was last that week. That sleeplessness. So was always a massive contributor to my rises in anxiety. And it's yeah. one of the reasons why I gave up drinking Yeah, because I would be out partying. I would go to sleep at 4 a.m. Yep. I'd wake up at 9 a.m. the next day off four hours, five hours of sleep. And I would notice that my anxiety was exponentially higher than nights. I got good sleep Yeah, last night since my body was turning inside out because of food poisoning. I slept for about two hours mm. today. I'm on edge. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not myself. Like yeah. you just said, you know, so I think it's so important for people that, struggle with anxiety to make sure they're getting a full night's sleep oh, and it sleep sucks is, when you when you're suffering with that oh sleep is like the number one thing in life for your body like it my girlfriend is so she's literally writing a paper she's in her last class for um for school um that 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 is literally about sleep right now she's writing it and she's telling me all these things about how important sleep is and all these studies and it's crazy what good sleep will do i realized that in my adult life 18 to 22 Toxic hustle, four or five hours a night, sleep is for the week, sleep when I'm dead. You know, it's the message that the entrepreneurs you see on Instagram <laughs> preach. Yeah. It's not realistic. Yeah. I'm an adult. Yo, if I get six hours, I'm fucked. Yep. Especially in training camp. In training camp, I'm, I'm at I, legitimately nine to 11 hours per night. Yeah. Sleep is just, it's so important. Please Please, listeners, do not underestimate sleep. Like it's not cool to not sleep. It's like, not, like it's just not cool anymore. That, that's the thought. Is pe- people are like, man, as you just <clears> mentioned, <throat> you know, time to go. And and there's these people that are up. They'll work in like tech up in you know North, uh, Northern California, so cool, well, yeah. and and they're just like three hours of nights, uh, three hours of sleep a night, and it's just unsustainable. If you if you got to do it though, I will say if you got to do it. You know, you're working on a project. You have a deadline. You have to, like, you, oh, you have to do sure. a gun to head type there. situation. You have yeah. to do it in your twenties. Do it, do it in your twenties. Yeah. yeah. If you got to do it, you got to do it. Yeah. 
if you're doing it because you think you're going to reach some goal, you're much, you will be much more effective, maximized and optimized when you are on a full night of sleep, when yeah. you're operating with all your, all your energy. Yeah. Exercise, I, exercise, I presume I, has also helped. I actually oh, wanted to bring up something. I was talking to this with my buddy, Joe, mm -hmm. and he, we were talking about anxiety. Um, what did I cut you off? Yes. Did you think it's Joe Mama? Oh, I'm so sorry. I was in my head thinking about what I didn't mean to go ahead. It, it it's a four person podcast. It happens. It's fine. Yeah. He asked about exercise, but to, to counter your point, I already asked him about it. So it's fine. So exercise has been helpful. <laughs> Well, I mean, he just he goes exercise. Well, I'm, 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 I'm an exercise guru. I want to know I what know. he's doing. I want to talk about the Peloton. I want to talk about his oh, you know, nice. 600 calorie limit. Like, I don't yep. know. I, I'm, into, I'm into exercise. I don't fucking The Peloton. Know. Have you ever thought about getting a road bike? Like an um, actual road bike? So I have, but then I also think, like, man, I'm in LA and <laughs> this is a sketchy ass place to it's ride so a bike bad. around. So I'm not trying to get hit by a car. Yeah, right. Mike got um, fucked up one I got time. hit once. Yeah. And I'm trying not to deal with that at all. I read the book. I, 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 you know, I, I know all about that, that experience I had. So it's like, Fuck! I really don't want to uh, to risk that. But we have we have the Peloton. Then we also have this. The, the, you can see kind of the, the screen behind me. But we have like this in the wall machine called uh, Tonal, and it's like having a basically a gym. In yes. your oh, yes. those are awesome! Rich's yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, those are awesome. Yeah. yeah. So we have one of those. So like I can do. I'm working with like a physical trainer buddy now who's like, hey, here's your goal. You do what workout you want to do. You have. The tonal. We have the nice pool in the backyard. I can go swim. I can. We live in a great little area that I can go out for a walk or a run for forty five minutes. I can go hike. I can do the Peloton. If if those aren't, I have so many options. Do whatever workout excites you that day. Don't do it just because it's like, well, time to Peloton again. If I'm dreading it, you know, go. Yeah, you do do, do a it. lift or something. Do you do it before or after you stream? I, I worked out this morning. Yeah. I find when I work out before my media, my thing. When I'm at, whenever I'm shooting, yeah, it is exponentially harder. I'm sweating right now. My cheeks are wet I'm, or red. That's I'm why I'm tired. sweating. I literally Peloton took a quick shower, Dentist. drove right over here. So yeah. I'm still like <laughs> my body's still fucking going. Yeah, you know, yeah, same. Um, but I, I like working out in the morning. I actually work out best when I don't even eat. I just get up. First thing I do is this workout. Fasted. And I love that feeling for the rest of my day. That no matter what happens in my day. If I worked out in the morning, my day is going to be a success hmm. because even though I don't have the best stream, even if even if the rest of my day doesn't maybe go the way I want, if I, I can work out and then sit on my ass and watch eight episodes of a goddamn TV show, but I worked out hmm. and I did something good for myself that day. Yep. And that's why I love it. If I if I wait until after the stream, I'll make up so many more excuses. Huh. I'll be drained, as you mentioned, from doing an eight-hour stream on a game like Warzone where I'm fucking going the whole damn time trying to entertain 25, 30,000 people that it ends and I'm like... Do I want to go sit in the hot tub, shower, and lay down and scroll TikTok, or do I want to go sweat with Cody Rigsby on Peloton as he's yelling at my ass, the, the, my favorite hot tub. performer on there? I'm like, yeah, hot tub nine to ten times. Sure. I'm happy that you learned how important it is because honestly, like exercise, as you know, because you read, has always been the bedrock of mental health for me. Yeah, like when I'm when I'm working out, when I'm spinning pedals, or when I'm running. If I'm moving, my mind stops moving. Yeah. It's like it's like they work in, in, in collaboration with each other. So mm -hmm. or, or or vice versa. So if one's happening, the other one's not. Yeah. And I found it's one of the only things that I can get to slow that down. Yeah. That racing thoughts, the catastrophic thoughts, the negativity, the all or nothing thinking. Yep. When I'm moving. Yeah. So it's great. It's it's such a great piece of advice for people out there that are suffering. Yeah, you do a good job of it. I'm always impressed. Yesterday was Sunday. I see you walking out back. I'm I'm in my boxers, like taking a swim. I'm like, what the, what the fuck you doing, bro? It's Sunday. <laughs> Sunday morning. So you're going to work out. I, I was just I'm disgusted. I take a break. I champ. have to. I have to. Like that's what I found out about myself and I, uh, our friend Kevin Hines, mm -hmm. who's obviously you know uh, suffered from quite a bit of mental health issues himself has found that if he doesn't do it, it's catastrophic to his day. And I'm the same way. If I don't get my workout in, I, I will have that anxiety will start to build, build, build. So yeah. when I go on a vacation and five days go by and I haven't worked out, it's troubling. It almost is counterproductive when people are like, I'm going to go for a break on vacation. It doesn't work out. It's actually really <laughs> funny we're talking about this because my multitasking skills is shit right now. Right. So like you're talking and my mind is like traveling and it's trying to th keep up <laughs> with itself and it is just all over the place. But what I was trying to do before I really interrupted you. I'm sorry. No, why am I sorry? I'm I'm sorry that I I'm, I'm sorry that I made sorry a thing out sorry. of it. I don't know. I, no, it's, I'm it's sorry fine. for saying sorry. But that's so it's it's like perfect timing. I just didn't sleep and that was it. But anyways, going into <laughs> it, uh, do you ever feel that because your career is always thinking ten steps ahead? Yeah. And you're always trying to fix the problem. Your mind is trained at fourteen hours a day. There's going to be something I need to do because you're a self made man of course do you ever feel that your anxiety comes when you have nothing to do that you just pick a problem to fix oh yeah 
hundred percent. It's like my brain is always trying to fixate on something. I didn't realize how bad I have been where I just don't let myself ever stop that. Like, even if I went downstairs to hang out with, with the rest of my roommates, you know, we, we have three couples that live in the house. Even if I go downstairs to hang out, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to use my switch and I'll just talk, yeah. but I'll be playing something on the switch. And like, even that is detrimental because you know, it's like, sure, that just replaces my phone, but it's it's You're crazy that no matter what, problem, yeah. yeah, I need to always be stimulated so that when I don't, exactly what you just mentioned, yeah. if I just lay down in bed at night, then I'm like, why do I feel my heartbeat? Why do I put my head to my pillow and hear my blood circulating? Like, do I have a fucking problem? These thoughts. So, so do you, like, you don't, mm, I'm not going to put it on you, I'm going to put it on me. This is a very uh, weird thing to open up publicly, but yeah. I was against smoking weed yeah. 26 years of my life. I thought if you ever use you're gonna like my answer to this because yeah if you ever use a supplement to uh, fix yourself that it's a crutch and that it, it's very weak and in my mind that's how I thought until I did my own research on it obviously got my parents' approval on it and I just I had to sit down and then I talked to the doctor and he's like yo just fucking ch smoke weed and relax and so I don't use it to create yeah but there's a time in the night where I will smoke a very tiny bit to give my mind a vacation mm, yeah. like I need to get away with. Uh, not always figuring out I have to do something. My mind is like, do, 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 do. So like, I can't sleep. Yeah. I don't sleep. Mm. Have you ever thought about... So what's funny, you mentioned it. Well, you, you had mentioned earlier how you didn't drink in high school. I didn't drink till I was 21 mm. at all. My first drink was 21st birthday, a Red's Apple Ale. Quite the, quite the first boy. drink. Oh, nice. um, and then uh, I didn't smoke weed. I'm 26 now. Never smoked weed once in my life. Uh, this week I got one of the... There's this like pen that is um, one part THC to six parts CBD. And it's literally called the Com Pen. Yeah. And it's meant to help with your people with anxiety and things just like that. And yeah, it's the first time I've ever tried anything like it. And I, I just hit it like once before bed. And I don't even know if it's a placebo effect, if I'm if it's actually working. But I fucking slept last couple nights, so yeah, I completely agree with this. The CBD alone will do that. CB, yeah. CBD is magical. CBD, CBD, CBD is, is ma it. yo. Nothing why is this just now like a thing? In the past two years, CBD came out. There's a law legal legality. Is, is that laws what? And it's in, it's insane. No, yeah. CBD is legal in all states. It is now. No, no, no. It isn't. All 50, He's saying all it wasn't. States. Yeah, it wasn't that's, why, that's why. It oh, wasn't, it wasn't before. That's why it wasn't oh, price so prominent as it is now. It's funny how you mentioned that. How it's like so many people use it for so many different things. There's a. The Real Bros of Simi Valley, which is like Cody Ko. <laughs> yeah, we know about it. Yeah, it's <laughs> in, in the new season, um, Bryce in the show like breaks both of his legs in a skating yeah. accident. He like fucking snaps him in half. Pull the plug, Doc. And, yeah, just pull the plug. Exactly. But like the next episode, he's just got this fucking jug of CBD next to him and he's just rubbing it on his legs and, and within like three days, he's back to skating after because he's like, the CBD shit is magical. It is. Yeah. I use it all the time. I have an ailment. Dude, I have, I have, you can ask my assistant. She has 10 of these little CBD things. Yep. We, we need a fucking CBD brand. Deal. We have Why it. do, it's, it's in the inbox okay, right now. Okay, it's okay, done. fantastic. I, I would love to plug a phenomenal CBD code. Do you want to plug them now? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not CBD, but I got some even better. Guys, looking to last longer and go a few extra rounds? Want to be confident every time it's time for sex? Yeah. <laughs> Get to BlueChew.com. BlueChew.com has the first ever chewable that brings your performance in the bedroom to another level. Check this out. They've got the same active ingredients that are in Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. And since they're chewable, they, they can work faster. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And this stuff is cheaper than those other two. So this is a no-brainer. Basically, if you like sex, which I'm presuming most of you do, go to BlueChew.com. Plus, you don't need to go to the doctor's office or spend time waiting in the pharmacy line. BlueChew's online physician consult is free. Once approved, your order ships straight to your door in a discreet package and i got a great deal for you guys visit bluechew.com get your first order free when you use the promo code logan just pay five dollars shipping again that's b-l-u-e chew.com promo code logan back to the episode perfect place <laughs> i'm just rubbing it all over myself my wrist my ankle my torso anytime i'm sore yep. magical and, and i use it i use it a lot too but be careful with the THC breakdown especially six to one because yep. it's actually kind of high they make an 18 to one mm. because as somebody who struggles with uh, an anxious mind yeah you may at some point find a, a weird a effect when it comes to psychoactive drugs Work being added into way. your into your recipe yeah. for success so just be mindful of no it. for sure i i definitely am using it really really sparingly and yeah. have never had any interest to actually smoke weed i just again when i was in an extreme circumstance like last week i was throwing every fucking dart at it that i put could. me to sleep yeah what about melatonin I, that's what I, I, I said. I said that to and you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes I'll have three to six milligrams, and that's it. And and but I, yeah, I always I have trippy it. dreams every time I do. Oh, that. for sure. I, I don't like it. <laughs> you know what's funny? But I dreams. never remember my dreams, and people say that's not normal. No, it is. What? It, it is. That's, yeah, that's it, the it most is normal no, thing in the world. Normal, actually, oh, okay. Yeah. Let me tell you guys something. You ready? Before I smoked weed, yeah. I knew my shit was bad, and the doctor's like, "Well, explain it." I go, "I found out on God." 
I found out about how we have multiple dreams a night because I was like sitting there and my eyes are like going back and I was watching multiple dreams happen at once and then I just knocked out. And so I was like, I woke up the next day and I Googled it and you have like a thousand dreams a night or something like that. Four to five. But but close. No, like four to like a thousand thoughts or something like like crazy. Yeah, no. You, <laughs> we like, need a fact check. For you, buddy. <laughs> you're you're, you're just saying so many check. things. I will Google I, this right now. Yo, Hold it's on. like, a, a, what was that ESPN show where they'd, a, they'd end the show with Rome and he would literally just go, go through everything. He would go through every fact. It was like, that was completely fucking wrong. Uh, <laughs> not to put you on a pedestal of invin- invincibility. Okay. Uh, but as someone who has been blessed with not struggling with anxiety and the majority of mental health Ill- yeah. illness is I, ha- I have my breakdowns but the only one to see them is usually Josie or me <laughs> sorry babe sorry Mike <laughs> um, it's so fascinating to me how when I watch you you're this bubbly energetic extremely happy charismatic person yeah. and to know that you are still indeed a human being yeah. who who goes through things and um, struggles it's 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 refreshing, and I want to say I appreciate you for opening up in that way. Thank you. I think I think it's important. You mentioned uh, not being the bullshit influencer who only shows the highlight reel. Yeah. And I told this to Alex Warren on the last episode. I said, "Brother, you're only showing your highlight reel," and he's like a he's a full 360 degree human. Yeah. And I think the more influencers that can really be truly authentic and show who they really are to their audience are going to be the ones with the longevity oh yeah i I know i'm not the coolest dude in the world i know i'm I'm not trying to portray that or anything i'm just like man i I, this is a dream come true Mm. if you told 14 year old jack or 10 year old jack that this would be my job right now that i'd be doing this and have opportunities like this and Mm. you know i've met so many incredible people i would have slapped you in the face so (laughs) it's 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 been unbelievable and you know just got to keep on going with it. There's no end in sight. I'm not stopping. I have a question for young gamers. Yeah. I'm young gamers, anyone who's trying to make it in the gaming industry, I'm asking this go. on behalf of you. All right. So artists, creators, influencers, celebrities, entertainers, whatever. The hardest thing in the world is that barrier to entry. Yeah. That discoverability. Yep. When you have that moment where, okay, now this is a career. I have yep. my first kickstart. I'm going to, I'm going to take this from here to the stars. For me, um, it, it was still extremely difficult, but I will say it was easier than being a gamer because all I have to do, all I have to do is make a viral video, mm-hmm. comedy sketch, viral vlog, shareability is, yeah. is, is built into the type of content I'm creating. Get it? The type of content I'm creating is more conducive to shareability yep. than that of gaming. Yeah. So how does a young gamer who's just as charismatic as you, maybe even better at you than a game, maybe not, who has two, li- two viewers, yeah. how do they get discovered? Well, you know, I'll preface this by saying this, and and I think first I want to turn it back to how kind of if someone will look at you and they're like, I want to be a YouTuber one day. How did, how did you get started on YouTube, Logan? Mm-hmm. Well, I subbed to you, and like your I told you this before, and like literally your first thousand people on YouTube when you were switching from you were trying to move mm-hmm. off platforms yeah. from Vine and grow as anyone should, and you've seen the people that have done that, and and I thought it was going to be fascinating to see how the different Viners do this. So I followed you on YouTube right away. You were at the um, Burning Man. It was your Burning oh Man vlogs. Oh shit! And uh, and and I remember seeing like, wow, here he goes. So. If someone were to ask you and go, hey man, I have zero sub or five five subs on YouTube. Yeah, I would. What you kind of instinctively have to say is, hey, I leveraged a previous audience I had to give me that first little kickstart to mm-hmm. then at least get me somewhere. Because starting from zero and starting from ten is infinitely different in a in an experience, right? Because ten you have ten people who will who can vouch for you, can get eyes on it to at least give you some sort of feedback, some traction to get you going. When you start at zero, zero people watching a stream, zero people watching videos, it's a completely different experience. So the first thing that I can say, I know I kind of say this long-winded, I talk a lot, so tell me to shut up whenever. Uh, Mike <laughs> and I probably are pretty similar in that. But uh, but w- is that I didn't start my streaming career at zero. I tried once at zero and it got to like four viewers after two months and then quit to go back to school and focus on my fraternity and stuff like that. Um, that when I became a commentator and I had that first opportunity to get on get in front of a screen and did those 40 shows in a row, I then got asked to commentate Call of Duty. I built a bit of a Twitter following from that of like 10 to 15,000 people so that I then decided, hey, my first job in Burbank, California in 2016 was like 45 grand a year. And I'm in a, a rent of this place. It's like $1,700 a month or something. And I'm like, this is... I'm barely making enough to get by and live life. And I'm like, I need some supplemental income. So let me start streaming. So my first stream at 50 viewers, you know, that's that's in the top, top 
I was, was going to say that's that's great. Yeah, that's phenomenal. So so, but that's because I leverage a previous audience. So mm. when people ask me, I get donations all the time, or, or people will come to my stream and, and and try to get my attention. Be like, what do you recommend for someone that's starting at nothing? And I, I and it's tough to say because I give my blanket answer, which is you have to be creative, you have to be unique, you have to give people a reason to watch. Why should someone watch you one day and then tune in the next day? You have to collaborate with others. You. And I feel like uh, a lot of people are kind of shy away from collaborating. A, a show like Impulsive, right, is mm. a very collaborative effort. People will absolutely watch you three on the show, but then you'll have entirely new audiences tune in for your six yes. nine episode, or yeah. hopefully for this episode. P- please like and watch if you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> um, so, so there's the collaboration that comes with it too. But then the the blunt answer is that you got to get lucky. There, there there is a luck involved in this. There is absolutely a luck where. You mentioned that shareability, not every video was a banger, but yeah. there's that one video that resonates with your audience on Facebook because it gets to the Karens and the moms that share it all. And then next thing you know, that leverage of that Facebook audience then gives you that little bit of extra kick on your YouTube, which is really where you want to grow the platform. Or I tell people right now, TikTok is the number one place for me. If you're trying to start from zero, you start with TikTok and then funnel it towards something like Twitch. Can I piggyback off your answer? Sure. Because I agree with you. There's a level of luck that all of our influencer friends have had. Yeah. Let me give your young viewers, your young creators, gamers, streamers, some tactical advice that yeah. may increase your chances of getting lucky. Here right? we go. Look at this. Right? This is, this I, is I, breaking I news. Here's, from here's one of the what top I did. People out there. Here's what I did. It, this actually didn't work because I did have my lucky moment. Yeah. But if I didn't do these things, maybe I wouldn't have had that lucky moment. Exactly. All right. So. Get creative in how you're showing people your stuff. Bro, when I was making YouTube videos, I would post every single one of them, little snippets, clips, whatever, on iFunny from 10 different accounts and upvote them from the same accounts <laughs> and try to get them involved in the algorithm. Yeah. Now, go on Reddit. Like you said, go on TikTok, the platform of discoverability, the platform of viral content. Anything, and again, I'm not in this phase now, but email your top creator, say, yo, my name's Jack Courage Dunlop. Attach a picture of yourself. Say what your resume is in a short, succinct thing and a highlight reel of the things you do. Maybe it'll catch, if you email 100 creators, Facebook groups, anything, maybe like it'll Facebook catch LinkedIn. someone's attention. Yeah, you have to get your stuff out there. That's all it is. The discoverability and that chance of getting lucky will increase the more you're really putting yourself out there. It yep. may never catch, but if it might. I mean, it, it did for me. It did for you. Casey and I sat, talked about it in his vlogs from years ago. I forget which episode it was, but he literally said, "Like, listen, your first ten will be will be harder than your first hundred. Your first hundred will be harder than your first thousand. Your first thousand will be harder than your first ten thousand. And it, and it's the truth. It's like once you get that momentum, but it's that first opportunity that is like it's Absolutely. so tough. And and when it happens, like for example." Among us right now with it popping, I'm looking at my girlfriend going, hey, babe, I'm going to be grinding these next couple weeks while this shit's really hot. I'm yeah. going to be getting the hours in. I'm going to be collaborating with all these people. I'm going to be planning these groups. You're going to see a little bit less of me because while the, while the iron's hot, you got to fucking strike, the gas. strike a window go. of opportunity. Yeah. You got to go. I won't indeed, always be indeed. like that. Hi, boys. That was strong. Yeah, that was strong. I, I appreciate you coming on. This was a blast. Yeah, thank you, bro. It's long overdue, like I said. I, I'm so pumped to see you literally become one of the most popular gamers in the world. Thank you. Young, you're 26 years old. Long road ahead of you, man. Yeah. So appreciate you. Where can they follow if they want to follow you on Instagram, Twitter, all the things? Uh, at Courage JD on all social medias, including Discord. We have over 15,000 active members. That's what I say. Fantastic. And so. if they want to watch you stream, which I'm going to be tuning in. Like, it's just watch this fucking guy stream. He's yeah. incredible. So Where, if you're waiting for me on Twitch, I'm not there. I'm 10 months into streaming exclusively on YouTube. Nice. Uh, YouTube.com slash Courage JD. Uh, stream there probably five, five days a week. There we go. All Beautiful. right, yeah. cool. Hey, thank you guys for listening to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. We love you. Hit that subscribe button. Turn the notifications on. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.